tonight, Nancy drew in the mystery of the fallen angels. serious problem. What kind of problem? Where does it say problem? It says right here that you are too masculine, too dominating a man for the average girl to handle. Oh, that problem. Your forcefulness must cause girls to run from your advances. Oh, that's because of my forcefulness. Trust me. Well, go ahead. I can take it. <laughs> Time has run out. I give you three bucks. It is for a benefit. Whose? You know, I have to hand it to you, Robert. This is the most successful benefit you've thrown so far. Well, thank you, Carson. Gives us a good excuse to hold on to the old place. Now that the kids are off on their own and all. <laughs> Robert, how could we possibly get along with less space? We're already down to only 18 rooms apiece. <laughs> Henry. No, we're not. If only you could tell people who you are. Now, come on. Look, I implore you to run a carnival, not go on joy rides. Hey, no, but take it easy. Take it easy. We just got lost. Why all... is it you kids always get lost when there's work to be done? Hey, we're all sorry. Hey, say you're sorry. 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 Oh, it's a chorus <laughs> of angels. It's wonderful. It's just wonderful. All right, let's get back to work. And you, if you're smart, you'll go back home. Oh, I'm having a ball. Oh, yeah, some ball. You're a regular Cinderella. You've been here two days, and you're beginning to look like her already. What's wrong with the way I look? Look, what are you ashamed of? You've got so much guck on that face that you look like you're wearing a mask. Oh. Look, I know it's tough, but would you try to look like human beings out there? Now, come on, let's move it! Hey, look, I've had it. I'm cutting out. Hey, you cut no place. We got important business to take care of later. You know that. Sorry, I was only kidding. I thought I was right. You ain't human. Loosen up. I'm just not used to There's this. a lot you ain't used to. But you're gonna learn. And tonight's your first lesson.
to see if things are running smoothly. Uh. Oh, can I help you? Uh, no, uh, I just got lost. You're Henry Salazar, aren't you? Uh, I gotta be going. What's he doing here? You know him, don't you? Well, that's the kid that used to work in Foster's drugstore until old man Foster caught him with his hand in the till. That was never proved, as I remember. Still, I, I don't like him wandering around my house. What's he doing here to benefit in the first place? He wasn't even invited. But they didn't see you with me. And you don't say a word, no matter what happens. I mean it, Tina. You know nothing. You don't know me. You don't know what I was doing here. You understand? You could get into trouble. That's nothing compared to what you'll be in if you say anything. Now, promise me. Tina. Promise me. I promise. five minutes later and orders another drink and uh, <laughs> a little time passes. He says, bartender, what's that picture over the bar? What was that? Well, it sounded like a whistle. Uh, well, anyway, the guy uh, goes back to the bar and he says, uh, At least no one was hurt. We can always replace the jewelry. Well, how much was in there, Robert? Well, it isn't the quantity. It, it was insured for over a million dollars. Are you sure the theft took place this evening? Oh, positive. I, I, I took the jewelry I'm wearing out just before I went down to the carnival. I'd better call the police. Hey, take it easy, babe. You did fine, just fine. I'm gonna know. No way. I think I was seen. Yeah, by who? You've been here all the time. I'll back you up. I know because I've been here all the time, right? There's nothing to worry about. I told you. Hey, no sweat. Jordan, uh, Miss Jordan. There it is, Sheriff. Oh, hello, Mr. Drew, Nancy. Sheriff. Well, is this exactly the way you found it? That's right. Anybody touch anything? Of course not. Oh, sorry. I forgot for a minute who I was dealing with. The forensic boys will be here in a while. Oh, uh, do you have any ideas who might have done this? 
Oh, there must be a couple of hundred people on the ground, Sheriff. It could have been anyone. Well, did you see anyone acting suspiciously in the house or near it? Well... Well, what? Now, either you saw someone or you didn't. Well, Henry Salazar was here. Henry Salazar. Yes, and I asked him what he was doing here, and he just said he was lost. I tried to talk with him, and he just ran. That's right, Sheriff. You know, I've always liked Henry Salazar. He was a schoolmate of Nancy's, but uh, he was acting very strange. Well, maybe he was just acting strange because he felt out of place here. Mr. Jordan, was Salazar invited to your benefit? No, he wasn't. That's good enough for me. I'll pick him up. Nancy, what are you doing here? I work as a part-time investigator for your attorney. What attorney? What are you talking about? My father. Mr. Drew's going to take my case? Mm-hmm. He was undecided about it at first. He thought it might even be unethical because he saw you at the Jordan house at the time of the burglary. But the Jordans talked him into it. He's going to come see you himself, but I wanted to talk to you first. Yeah, well, uh, I don't really have anything to tell you. Henry, so talk to me. Let me help you. What do you want to know? Did you steal Mrs. Jordan's jewelry? No. What were you doing there last night? Henry, you've got to tell me that. That's the first question they're going to ask you. I wanted to take a look at the house. I got lost. I was on my way back to the carnival. That's it. You expect anybody to believe that? It's what happened. I can't help what people believe. Did it have anything to do with seeing Tina? Tina who? The Jordan's maid. I thought you two knew each other. I never even met her. Now, look, don't involve an innocent party in this mess. Let me wreck one life at a time, will you? It may be too late not to involve her. I was in the house on my own. I did not rob the Jordans. Now, that's all I got to say to you or your father. Just leave me alone. You're frightened. I understand that. But we're going to help you, both of you. talk to you. It's very important. I've told the police all I know. I know. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary last night? No, nothing. No one was in the house? I was in my room all evening. I just left Henry Salazar in jail. He's protecting you, isn't he? I don't know him. Well, you know, he's the one who needs protecting. Please, if you know anything that would clear him, that would prove it was impossible for him to be in that room at the time of the burglary, you must tell me. I can't tell you anything. I don't know anything. Do you know what you're doing to him by not telling me the truth? I'm sorry. I've got work to do. Okay. I considered it very carefully, and I, I wanted you to know what my decision was, Robert. Thank you, Carson. I'm delighted. Hello, everybody. Hi, Nancy. I was just saying that I've decided to defend Henry Salazar. I don't understand how you could be so concerned about a man who wipes you out, Mr. Jordan. If he's guilty, the law will take its course without my direction. If he's innocent, <laughs> I don't wish to be responsible for destroying anyone's life. Now, there were a lot of people here last night. I'm more interested... I'm more interested in someone who's been around here a while. Who do you mean? That maid of yours, Tina. How long has she been here? About three months. Mm -hmm. Has she ever given you any trouble? Oh, none at all. I mean, Tina's become like one of the family. Sheriff, what are you getting at? That's a pretty old safe. 
has a very tricky combination. Now, maybe Salazar has some talents that we don't know about, but the chances are he had an accomplice on the inside. Was Tina ever in this room when you opened that safe? Well, I believe she was in here once or twice, bringing something or taking something out. I'm sure she wasn't watching the numbers. You were watching her all the time? I guess not. You see, if we can establish a link between Salazar and Tina, then I think our case is airtight. Aren't you forgetting one thing, Sheriff? What might that be? Well, as Mr. Jordan pointed out, there were a hundred people here last night. Any one of them could have entered this place at any time. Now, you say you checked the safe before the carnival began. Was anybody in the house at all? Well, yes. I, I was going over some last-minute instructions with some of the carnival staff. But I... Isn't it possible that one of those people could have sneaked up and watched you opening the safe? No, that's pure supposition, Nancy. Well, it's no more circumstantial than the evidence you have against Henry Salazar. He has a record. Well, carnivals attract all sorts of people. Men escaping from the police and drifters, teenage runaways. Can't you check out any of those people? The carnival is gone, Nancy. It's in another county. It's out of my jurisdiction. I have to go. Oh, I'll be wanting to talk to that maid of yours later on today. Well, don't worry, she'll be here, Sheriff. I simply don't believe that Tina had anything to do with this. Uh, don't worry, Clara. We'll look into it. I'll be in touch, Robert. Thank you, guys. I do believe that Henry and Tina are involved, but with each other, not with the robbery. I'm just going to have to check into that carnival myself. You heard what the sheriff said. The carnival's gone. Well, it's a nice day for a ride. That may not be too safe. Oh, I'm just going to poke around, ask a few questions. Nancy, people don't like to have their lives pried into. Well, I'm not going to pry. I'm just going to observe. <laughs> observe? Well, while you're observing, you be careful, okay? Now, let me know if you find anything out. I will. I still don't think this is a very good idea. Yeah, he's right for once, Nancy. This could be really dangerous. It's no more dangerous than it is for all the other runaways out there. Oh. Well, you don't look like a runaway to me. Why not? You look, uh, vulnerable. That's even better. Look, you guys better be going. Why? Runaways aren't often dropped off by two close friends. We'll make contact again when the carnival's in full swing. Nobody will notice us then. No, I still don't like the idea of you being here on your own without me to protect you. Well, that does worry me, Ned. But I'll be thinking of you, and if I get into trouble, I'll just do what you would do. It's good thinking. Bye-bye. Willie, be careful. looking bike. Think so, huh? Yeah. I got one just like it back home. Where's that? Wherever. Does it handle good? Why don't you try it out? I'm seeing as how you got one just like it at home. Sure. Hey! Oh, 
I'll break your head! I was after her. You nearly wrecked my bike. I'd say she handled her bike a lot better than you handled yours. If you ever, ever touch my bike again. Hey, take it easy, Vince. I told her it was okay. Besides, she didn't exactly push you in that lake. It's all right. No harm done. Circulation will return eventually. Who are you? What you doing here? I'm just looking for a job, and nobody will tell me where to go. Why don't you point out the boss, and I'll get out of your hair. It's a Sherman tank over there. She's the boss lady. Thanks. Sorry about the bike. On the lake. It's all right, honey. There'll be another time. <laughs> and you shut up, all the guy. <laughs> I don't believe it. You two guys, you're standing here looking at this. Now, come on, fix it. I don't care how you fix it. Just fix it. Excuse me. What were you doing on that bike? You're disrupting my workers. We have a carnival to set up here. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just trying it out, you know? Look, um, I need a job. What are your qualifications? Qualifications? Yeah, what can you do? I mean, can you drive a steak? Can you make cotton candy? Can you run that Ferris wheel? Can you drive a three-ton truck? What? What can I hire you to do? Well, none of those things, but I'm sure there's something around here I could do. Yeah, why must there be something you do? I mean, you kids leave home, and you figure that the world owes you a living. Who says I left home? No, you don't have to. What is wrong with you kids anyway? You are nothing but trouble. I mean, the carnival just draws you like flies. Look, you look like a nice kid. So listen to me. Beat it. Go home. Straighten things out back there no matter what went on. And take it from an old timer who knows. Show business stinks. Vince, I got to talk to you. Any more cracks about me taking back a swim from there. anybody? Yeah, what about her? She was at the benefit the other night. At the mansion in River Heights. Where have you been? We haven't got all day. Look, I've got brains. I mean, just show me anything and I'll learn it. I just no. need a place for a couple of days. Look, I don't even look, care look, about money. Will you get off my back? I'll give you a place for a couple of days. Thanks. No, don't thank me. Let's see how you work out. Go on over the shooting gallery and probably Jake can use some help. Okay. Uh, if, by the way, Vince was pretty angry back there. I like the way you cooled him down. Oh, it was just an accident. <laughs> sure. Hey, how you doing? Oh, look, I'm sorry about what happened. Hey, man, it's, it's okay, it's okay, forget it. How'd you do? Great. She gave me a job. Oh, yeah, yeah, terrific. Uh, doing what? The shooting gallery. Oh, great. I'll show you where it is. Okay. Hey, Gar. Yeah. Hey, the little lady is going to be staying on with us. Is that right? Yeah. Guess she saw me and uh, couldn't stay away. Yeah. <laughs> As she was at that, uh, at benefit we played in River Heights. I like carnivals. Yeah, you do, huh? Mm -hmm. You could be a spy. For who? What's your name? Joyce. Yeah? Joyce what? Marlo. Yeah, where are you from? Wherever. Wherever. Where's that? Hey, it really doesn't make any difference. Not even to me. Yeah, why didn't you ask for a job back in the last town, huh? Look, what difference does it make? Will you guys stop giving me the third degree and just show me where the shooting gallery is? Come on. Where? We're going for a little carnival ride, honey. I didn't come for a ride. I came for a job. I've been to sleep. No! All right, pull out that governor. Huh? Pull out the governor. Help! Somebody help! Help! Help!
find out if we caught ourselves an undercover lady cop. Faster guard! what you're doing here, or we take you for another little ride, huh? I gotta sit down. All right, this is the last time I'm asking you. Who are you? I know who she is. What? I know her. She sent you after me, didn't she? Well, what makes you think so? Why else would you be here? Hey, just who is she? Eileen Burton. She's uh, from my hometown, St. Paul. A friend of my sister's. It's why you're here, isn't it? Look, don't try and fool me. It's Anne you're talking to. Anne, listen, I'm not trying to get you to go back. I ran away from home myself. Well, I heard you were here, and I thought you could help me get a job. Yeah, then why didn't you come right out and ask for her in the first place, huh? Well, I thought I might get her into trouble, because if she was using a different name. Oh, honey, it ain't even close to the trouble you nearly got yourself into. I won't tell your sister. Okay. You can bunk in with me. I'll show you the ropes, okay? Thanks. Hey, uh, no hard feelings, huh? No feelings at all. We watch her. I owe you one. A big one. Why did you help me? I'm not sure myself. What are you doing here? I'm just looking for a job, just like I said. Look, you can lay that on the others, but not on me. Yeah! Hey, Come on, let's go for a ride. Look, I'm warning you. Get out of here, and I mean fast. I'll make up some excuse why you left, okay? Why? You know why. What did you have to do with that robbery in River High? Nothing. Why are you so frightened? Be out of here on your own by the time I get back. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, sure. I used to be a crack shot, but uh, I'm a little out of practice. You ever get out of this booth? I've been trying to. I got some bad news, Nancy. Tia's being held for questioning. Your father's afraid she'll be arrested as an accomplice. Uh, Henry was released OR. Jump bail. Does anybody know where he is? No. You found out anything yet? Well, the carnival looks legit, but I want to check out my welcoming committee. Who's that? I'll explain later. Can I take a break? Thank you. Anything new on the case? The jury's still missing. Yeah, along with, uh... A color TV, video cassette recorder, tape player, and other sundry small appliances. What are you talking about? This morning after the storm calmed down, the Jordans found all that stuff missing, too. Well, that doesn't make any sense. If Henry's guilty of stealing the jewels, why on earth would he bother to walk out with a bunch of appliances? I don't know. There it is. His name's Vince. He was very worried that I might be a spy. I want to see why he was so worried. Hurry! Okay. Oh, man! Oh, what could have happened to anybody? Brother. Bingo! We've hit Mother Low Country! Oh, we can't be sure this stuff's stolen. Gotta check these serial numbers. Get this down now. Yeah, hurry, Ned. WT4624NW. W264NW. 172500HL. OOHL. OOHL! W8X357. Seven! Seven. Alright, let's right. hurry. We should be calling the police. You found the thief. We found a thief. We don't know if he's our thief until you check out those serial numbers. Dad should have a record on that. We should have searched for the jewels. I don't think those jewels are in there. It just doesn't make any sense. What doesn't? The two thefts. What two thefts? The jewelry and the appliances. Now, if somebody's going to steal a million dollars in jewels, why are they going to walk out with a hundred dollars worth of television sets? I just don't think those robberies are connected. Now, wait a minute. There were two separate burglaries that night? I don't like the coincidence, but it's better than the alternative. Well, then Henry may still be guilty. Wait a minute, let's just solve one crime at a time. Now, you guys go back and check out those serial numbers and see if they match. Well, you gotta be careful, Nancy. Yeah, I will. Don't forget. I'll do just what you would do. Right. Let's go. Ned. <laughs> told me you jumped bail. Yeah, well, they arrest Tina as my accomplice. I gotta prove I didn't rob the Jordans. Your father told me you followed the carnival. Don't you realize that jumping bail is like an admission of guilt? I, I gotta find the thieves. Well, I've got a line on what's happening, but I'm gonna need more time. I don't got time, Nancy. I gotta prove my innocence now. Well, then help me. For the last time, what were you doing at the Jordan house that night? Were you there to see Tina? Yes. Yes, I was. But I can't let the police investigate her. Why? What are they going to find? A record? I can't tell you. You got to trust me. We got to find the answers together. Look at him. I've established a cover here, but if I'm seen talking to you, I'm going to blow it. Now you got to go back to River Heights and talk to my father. He'll protect you. I got to go. Vince's van today. Do they know who it is? They think they found us an undercover cop among us. Look, I don't know who you are, but... Well, go ahead. Don't let me interrupt. 
Why would anybody be investigating Vince? Suspicions, accusations. Happens all the time to Carney people, but uh, we know who was in the van. Let's go. Where do you want to go? To see how we deal with spies. Come on, join the party. We're gonna find out what this here little uh, spy was looking for. Who says I was looking for anything, man? I was just lost. Oh, sure, sure you was, man. That's why you broke into my van, right? You was, uh, you was looking for road maps. I didn't break in. I... So you admit you was in there? Look, man, I was just hungry. I was looking for something to eat, and I wasn't gonna steal nothing. Yeah, fine. Now that you admitted that, let's take it from the top, huh? Who are you? Henry Salazar. Yeah, what was you doing looking in my van? Like I told you, I was looking for something to eat. Hey, you expect us to believe that? You give us some straight answers or we're gonna give you a real special ride. until I find out who really stole those jewels. I don't believe it was the motorcycle gang. You called the police! We called your dad. The Syrian numbers that we found on the stereos, they matched the ones that were stolen from the Jordans. That's when your father and I decided we should get the police out here, and fast. Ned, you are without a doubt the smartest, neatest, most... The most forceful? Forceful man, I know. You know, she was with us. Did you have anything to do with the robbery? No! They made me. Everything's gonna be all right. When my father hears the whole story, he'll be able to help you. Oh, I should never have run away in the first place. It was the stupidest thing I've ever done in my life. Thanks for everything. Thank you for everything. Miss Drew, they'd like a statement from you. Of course. 
want to know something. Forget it. I don't deal with cops. You mean you didn't deal with cops? It's a question of whether or not you go up on minor burglary charges or a million dollar jewel theft. Jewel theft? What are you talking about? I don't think you committed both crimes. You better believe I didn't. You're going to cooperate with us, aren't you? Nancy, what's this big discovery? What about my jewelry? When will it be returned? Well, that's why I asked you to bring us up here, Mrs. Jordan. Would you mind if we looked inside your safe? <laughs> of course not. I'll give you a hand with the painting. Thank you. Uh, not you, Mr. Jordan. Mrs. Jordan, I'd like her to open it. Well, what's the difference who opens the safe? None, if she can open it by herself. I don't like your insinuations, young lady. Nancy, what are you talking about? The carnival thieves admitted stealing your appliances, Mr. Jordan, but they denied stealing your jewelry, and I believe them. Henry Salazar could not get into that safe without the combination, and I don't think Tina gave it to him. You're the only other people who had access to this room. That accusation is absurd. Now, Carson, we've been friends for over 20 years. Are you going to stand by and let your daughter accuse us of theft? I'm sorry, Bob. I'd like to hear what she has to say. Go ahead, Nance. Mrs. Jordan, would you please tell us again what happened the night of the robbery? Well, I... I came up here and uh, opened the safe and the jewels were gone. Open it for us now, okay? That she'd never seen you open it. That you once said the safe was too difficult to handle. Now that means the safe was already open and the jewels were already gone. Then someone else must have burgled us. A third set of burglars? Mr. Jordan, that's highly unlikely. But, but the alternative. I know. You stole your own jewels. made you suspect this? Ned and George checked into your finances and found out that things hadn't been going so well for you. Some bad investments and problems at your plant. There were a lot of other reasons, too. But they don't matter now. You'd started selling your jewelry one piece at a time. I was so sure that things would turn around and I'd be able to put us back on course. And when you ran out of jewels, you decided to fall back on the insurance and claim the gems had been stolen. I, I waited till the night of the benefits so that there would be a large crowd here. A carnival where people might be suspect. And that's when you really lucked out, when you found Henry Salazar in your house. A boy with a record who wouldn't come up with an alibi for himself to protect his sister. We didn't plan it that way. It just happened. We were hoping that no one would be caught. No, oh, would. When the boy was arrested, we didn't know what to do. We couldn't come forward then and say that we'd stolen our own jewelry. It was too late. We kept hoping the case against the boy would be dropped for lack of real evidence. Then when he jumped bail, I knew they would take that as an admission of guilt. But you would let him be tried and convicted and go to prison from one to five years? I'd have come forward before that. Carson, we even asked you to defend him. Well, you must believe me. I do. Carson. You don't have to ask that, Bob. We've been friends for over 20 years, and you've been my lawyer, Carson. Will you stick it out with me? Of course. I don't have the money to pay your fee. Well, uh, don't think about that. But uh, I think perhaps you'd better go see the sheriff. Yes. You know, 
it would have helped us a lot if you just told us about Tina in the first place. Yeah, I know. Well, I would have, but she was here illegally. See, I, I was trying to figure out some way to get her sponsored in this country. She was a registered nurse back in Mexico, and I figured she could do the same thing here if I could get her a green working card. And, you know, maybe then someday become a citizen like me. But now I don't know what's going to happen to her. Well, Dad's agreed to take on the case and speak with the immigration authorities. Sure. Well, she's highly trained. And there is a shortage of nurses. She should have a good chance. And I know Dad. Well, now, don't build me up too high, Nance. But I agree. I think there is a good chance. Well, I'm very grateful, Mr. Drew. Well, Nancy's the one who deserves your gratitude. So do I, in a way. After all, I've got four clients from just this one case of hers. <laughs> but, you see, the thing is, I, I have no money to pay you. That's all right. Neither do any of the others. <laughs> <laughs>